what is going on guys? So, this is actually my first night of annual leave. Got some time off finally. First time in my life actually, actually taking annual leave. Um, so yeah, my uh, first night. Got the box. This one's gonna be about the bike. So, some of you know I'm turboing this thing because why not? We got some, uh, well, actually a lot. We got a lot of parts from Golby's that have just shown up. So hopefully tonight we'll just uh, uh, put some pieces, bits and pieces. Be able to finish. That's the piece I needed. Um, be able to finish the fuel system. Or at least uh, make a good start on it anyway. Basic rundown is... TDO4 L WRX Turbo E85. Uh, Going to use an AEM FIC fuel and ignition controller. Uh, there is an AEM um, a AEM failsafe. So that's a wideband and a failsafe. So if something starts getting a bit funky, too much boost, not enough fuel, something like that. It'll actually just cut cut the ECU or cut the ignition. It'll cut something. Whatever I just decide that it's going to cut, it will protect the bike. So that's always good. Now we are running a, uh, excuse my du duct tape fabrication and mocking up here. Uh, this is actually a Ford Transit aftermarket uh, alloy intercooler. And this is a Suzuki SV650 aluminium radiator. It's a little bit longer than the factory one, but it's a lot thinner so as you can see I can mount it back further cut these tabs and stuff off in here I can mount it quite high I may need to raise the front maybe half an inch I think I need to raise a half an inch regardless and then we'll see how it kind of feels there I got the two inch lowering lens in the back here. those bad boys um, but I lowered the front a little bit too much I think even even without taking into consideration this kind of gap here. Um, the hoses will fit up, trim that, and you can see it's going to fit on that port there. That's right there, it's just going to fit up as well. Fuel goes everywhere. We got a ProFlow um, 380 fuel pump here. We have somewhere. We got the Fuel Lab. Uh, it's a stainless washable filter for E85 and six lines in and out. We're gonna mount around here somewhere. Uh, other than that, it's gonna be a pretty simple setup. Going to run a catch can. On this side, out of there's a crankcase port down there. There's also one down there somewhere. I'll run them up, and there's also an A and ten fitting. I had well little on here as well. All of those to the catch can. Make up a custom plenum, four inch tube with two runners, two turbo smart silicon adapters from some ridiculous size from high sung to uh, I think it's like one and a half inch pipes and then that will run down straight down there right and then into the intercooler other side from the intercooler back to the turbo and the turbo up under here somewhere um yeah pretty straightforward setup really and then e85 wind in the boost happy days so i will uh, put you on a little bit of time lapse of what i do next because i have no idea oh make up some fuel lines Run these, maybe get another bracket and or something for the fuel filter. Got oh, these T's and all this kind of stuff. Pretty complicated for a motorbike, I guess, given that it didn't have a return fuel system. Oh, I've kind of created one running the Saad fuel pressure regulator. These are 90% uh, Golby's fittings, and the other are Raceworks. Uh, a couple of Aeroflow fittings in there, too. Uh, yeah, really just bits. Is and then, oh yeah, there's literally 
all motorbike stuff, all the shiny parts basically, and they're about floating in spider little turbo in there. And yeah, all of that, so we'll get into it. hose fittings a couple of hoses made um, I guess the little layout is I need one more and six probably looking at like a 45 degree or something I need to cut this a bit shorter that'll go to the underside of the tank there so you can see that on there the bulkhead fitting is actually the feed and the one down there the OEM feed is now the fuel return so just need one more PDFE fitting to complete the fuel system turn it fuel in filter around pump to the fuel injectors which is also managed by you see the hose runs down and under to the fuel pressure regulator and that will bleed off any excess pressure that I deem necessary 
all the way up and back to the fuel now fuel return which was the fuel feed pretty straightforward pretty simple just need that fitting there um, started on mocking up the lines for the breather so we've got one here so we'll run one May and 10 line up under the fender around the catch can I need to pull this out somehow move it back so my foot is just rubbing on the edge of it here so I need to move this back I'll make up a stainless bracket take it off the mounting points for the passo seat and the passo pegs move it back obviously that's not going to do so I'll bend and straighten that so it sits flat with a bracket back a couple of hole saws run two of the AN10 oh here we go uh, 400 series 5 8 hose straight through knock everything over straight through up under the frame for one around across this bolt here so this is where the fuel tank mounts seat sits it sits proud it sits quite high one hose all the way across squeeze it down there I'm not sure if you can see the, uh, the spring clip there that is actually the crankcase breather the OEM one so I'll run it all the way up across back bottom um, A and 10 here push lock push lock number two will run straight up and across try and fit it through here with this bolted on it's just enough room across the top of this bolt and we've got the second one here there is another rocker cover breather the OEM one which is quite small down the bottom there and that just kind of feeds straight out straight down so I might just cap that off because this bank is actually um, well maintained by this one I guess or I could just leave it like that but that kind of negates the point I didn't like the fact that they both actually just dumped straight down um, if I start pushing boost through it and it starts pushing water and oil out uh, no not onto the rear tire so that's why I got the old drainable catch can and that way I can manage and maintain and see what it is doing via the catch can uh, contents after a couple of runs so obviously if it's pushing a bunch of oil the rings or something are starting to let go or I'm just pushing 20 psi of boost through a motor that's not meant to have any um, so yeah that's the mock up of that I also found that the AEM uh, FIC will fit quite nicely in the rear storage compartment so there's enough room to get the USB which is the USB and if I trim some of this plastic here a little firewall a little bank there if I trim some of that that's going to be perfect just to run it straight around the starter solenoid um, we'll be able to get power and everything this is the move this bugger out of there oh yeah my ECU actually sits back uh, sits wedged in there nice clean run to get the uh, wire and loom so there's a few wires to run for that hopefully I'll be able to grab everything off this loom here and I won't have to run them all the way up to get to the TPS and stuff like that um, so all in all yeah after all of that I really just need one more fitting and that's the fuel system done um, just need to run that hose and that's the breather system I'll get some stainless now I've got some stainless uh, yes I do some stainless sheet I'll actually chuck that in the band so I'll cut it up and make a bracket for the breather maybe do that tomorrow evening once I've done these cars and then that's all mounted there so that's that done I'll work out a way of mounting of this there are four holes in the bottom of the ECU to mount it but I kind of want some um, some vibration dampers some rubber grommets or something just to take a little bit of the vibration of the old V-twin from that I'll run and sit the wiring over there and I need to take all this intercooler stuff back off as well get the old die grinder or grinder and take all these brackets off um, yeah but progress is progress um, if you like it 
like, subscribe. And uh, I'm on annual leave, so I'll keep you guys up to date.